Hello beautiful creative souls, welcome to my first ever YouTube video. I'm going to step you through how I painted this um, really loose happy owl painting. Given that I'm new here on YouTube, um, I'd love it if you like, follow and subscribe. Otherwise, sit back and enjoy watching this video. Okay, so what you're seeing here is me actually laying down clean water onto the paper and then I'm dropping my watery paint into it. This technique is called wet in wet, meaning you wet your paper with clean water and then you drop your paint into it. And the reason I use this technique is it allows me to get a real soft layer down. And also it does a lot of the hard work for me. I don't have to work so hard to push the paint around because the water's down there. It allows the paint to bleed and soften and do wonderful things without me having to work so hard. So often you'll see me working wet and wet. Sometimes I work um, onto dry paper, but generally with these first few layers that you see me putting down, I'm working wet and wet so I can get the softness. I don't want harshness in my first few layers. I want everything to be really soft and allow me to just build gently on top. The secret to my particular style and technique is gentle layers building up and you can even see me doing it here with the eyes it's just layer on top of, of layer gently building up the intensity of the color and the shapes and the form so here's another example of the wet and wet layering so i'm just putting down another watery layer on top of what's already there in my background to build up the intensity slowly and then on the right hand side you'll see some dry brush strokes that wasn't wet and wet so now what you'll see is I'm working on the crispness and the detail of the eyes using a few different blues to get my lighting right and just dropping in the sparkle of the eye with gouache or white acrylic. Um, for me it's quite important that I start getting some sharp edges quite quickly. So likewise I'm doing that here in the background with the sharpness of the colour up against the back of the owl. Um, so much of an artwork comes down to um, crisp lines ver versus soft lines and that's exactly what I'm trying to do here in the background is get the crispness of that outline and then you'll see me soften it in other places so it's this back and forth push-pull um, and even you'll see me painting over with blue in what you would think are white areas but this is reflective light bouncing in and here is a perfect example of me actually throwing in that reflective light into the white areas. Um, now I'm just building up my background. My background for this piece was quite a tedious process. So it's just about building those layers, getting the intensity of the pigment and the tonal values. Um, and you're actually going to see me now just drop in another layer of the golden color on this gorgeous owl. The thing is, the way I treat my um, acrylic paint is I treat it like a watercolour and the secret to this technique is lots of very soft layers built up over the top of each other. So you're building up your intensity without ever truly getting that acrylic finish on your layers. It's just watered down to the point that everything's like a soft watercolour and then you can really build up your your layers on top of each other like I am here I'm adding a graphite gray color layer and my Payne's gray for my shadows and it really is just about the patience in layering there there isn't really any huge secret it's just the magic is in the layers um, you'll see me now shadowing a lot of my white areas and I'm doing that with Payne's gray I call Payne's gray um, shadow in a tube and then I'm bouncing in with some white gouache and in general just making sure I'm happy with um, my details and my layers and where my lights and my darks are before I move forward with my next lot of layers and even making sure that I brighten up certain areas of the face um, sharpening up the eyes and yeah adding in that really bright sparkle in the eyes as well his face was looking a little um, plain, uh, 
So you can see me, I've brought in some sort of pinky colors into his eye areas and I've started sharpening up these lines here. Now, typically if I was going for a realist look, I wouldn't be using outlines, but my style tends to fall somewhere between, um, not quite impressionism, but it's, it's certainly a very loose illustration style. So I'm always trying to figure out how I use line work to complement my paintwork as well. And then if I've got my line work down and I'm happy, you know, I'm always putting in my loose little details. You'll see I use dots to hint at the markings of the owl, but I don't get realist about it. That's certainly not my style. It's very illustrative um, and I'm layering my mediums, building my lines up, coming back in with more details, the markings of the owl, um, and just gently building things up to a point where I'm happy with how it all sings together. I'm now coming in with my Payne's Grey again and intensifying the shadows. You'd be surprised at actually how dark shadows can be when they're on a white surface. And it was really important for me to get this piece really moody. I did battle with um, my blues and blue is quite a tricky color. You're always um, got to make sure you're sort of balancing the warm and cool tones. And yes, blues can have warm tones. So um, the way I had to counteract my really, really warm blues that you can see in my background there was then layer in Payne's Grey as my shadows within the owl. And I, I put a lot of Payne's Grey and Prussian blue into the background. Payne's Grey and Prussian blue are definitely on the cooler end of blues. And so as this piece progresses, you'll see me do a lot of shading with Payne's Grey. Um, getting those hard shadows so you feel like the the feathers are layered on top on top of each other just like you can see here um, and yeah it's just getting just getting an intensity in the shadow so that you can get a feel of the mood and the lighting in this piece so over the next little while you're going to see me use my it's quite a dark indigo blue pencil and I actually used it to hint at some of the feather details. You'll notice this thing about me where I hint at details, I don't labor over them. I think sometimes things look better when they're hinted at rather than spelled out for the eye. So you'll see me, you know, layering in these lines and, and these details in the shadows and the details in the feathers. And I will often do that with paint first, but then I will sharpen things with my pencil. Here you're going to see me working with quite a bit of white gouache. Um, a lot of people will argue that you need to leave your white whites when you um, do watercolour. And yes, that actually is true. But there's nothing to say you can't use gouache or white acrylic to bring your lights back in. Um, you know, this can be part of your look. And um, I certainly use it to my advantage and I actually use it as a means of adding in a little bit of texture. Um, now I am layering in my pencil again, just making sure I'm getting all of my details sharp. I, I had lost some of my details in my, um, the claws there of the owl. And although I've already got some blue layered over that, I actually didn't worry too much about it. I, I don't get finicky if things have been covered over or I haven't been so neat in painting because the more layers you add to something, the more details you can pull out if you're clever about it. So yeah, didn't stress about this. Um, and as you can see here, I'm painting, pulling out details in different areas, adding more of a golden tone, uh, like a ready golden tone to the golds, popping some white back in. So this is sort of, it's a real back and forth process. Sometimes I don't know exactly where I'm going next and I have to sit and look at it for a while. Um, yeah, so you can you can spend a little bit bit of time not sure what you're doing, but eventually you get your direct. So right about now is when I start looking at my background and starting to feel like it needs a lot of work. I was kind of happy with where my owl was at, but now is when I have to really sort of hustle to get my background to where I want it to be. It, it didn't have the interest and the richness and um, the layers I wanted in it. So now 
I've got to work really hard to bring that in. And to be honest, I wasn't actually sure I was going to get it. And there's a point coming up here as I'm dropping in the white layers that I thought, oh, I don't know if I've, if I've ruined this or not. But the beautiful thing about working with acrylics and working with a very high grade paper is you can layer it. So I put in the white areas as some points of interest and light but realize they were just too much so you'll see me gradually start dropping those back with my very watery inky uh, layers of paint and um, you'll even see me like squeeze my brush coming up to drop in the inky layers of paint um, and I often do this I drop drop the paint in like literally like drops of it and then just let it dry and then see like here um then it's really rich and inky and then i got some i've got some interesting shapes to work with and it's it's those those shapes that i'm actually looking for it's those positive and negative shapes that you'll see in a little bit i actually pull out with a pencil and you'll see this rice sitting here um, what I actually did was use that to build in some more texture. I kind of, um, I like the granular look it puts in my artworks and my backgrounds. Um, the trick is actually being patient enough for it to dry because you can't really blow dry it. Um, so yeah, that's added that really lovely granular texture. And you'll see that actually now my background has that richness. And now that I'm happy with the background, I feel like I can really start finishing off my subject. Um, and I'm using a very, very dark Prussian and Payne's gray mixture on my brush to build up those lines. Um, I'm popping some whites back in that I felt I'd lost. 